So imagine it's dark, there's no light. One and a half billion people in the world uh, live without electricity or without access to a reliable source of electricity. They use unhealthy, unsafe, and often expensive products like paraffin, diesel generators, animal dung, wood, flashlights with disposable batteries, and kerosene. Kerosene is um, very dangerous. Lack of suitable home lighting is linked to illiteracy, poverty, and a multitude of health problems. Children cannot read or study at night without an education, and the cycle of poverty continues. This is a map from the United Nations Development Program, and it shows people in the world the percentages living without electricity, and it's one in five. <clears throat> Majority of people you can see centered in Africa and Asia. You can see this uh, map actually matches the one previously. So the black carbon emissions from kerosene lamps uh, release soot and smoke into the environment, creating environmental pollution. For individuals living under the uh, kerosene lanterns, they have soot and smoke. And the uh, World Health Organization can, uh, says that it's similar to smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. But Unite to Light has a solution. After being contacted by a professor in Ghana, Dr. John Bowers and his engineering students at UCSB and the Institute for Energy Efficiency designed a solar reading light, a healthy solution to replace kerosene. The first run of 100 lights was sent to Ghana in January of 2011 as student reading lights. Became an official nonprofit in November of 2010. Now, after school, children can go home and study at night. But we had some unintended consequences of the solar reading lights. They became solar all-purpose lights after they were used for disaster relief after the tsunami in Japan, the earthquake in Haiti, and they're now being sent by Direct Relief International in midwife birthing kits, hands-free. Uh, people use them even to walk through the darkness at night to Pay attention if there are any snakes in the grass. So you can see this woman actually cooking with the solar reading light. Uh, the financial impact of these solar lights has been huge. In rural Uganda, the average family will spend about a dollar a week on kerosene, which doesn't seem like very much, but it amounts to about 10% of their income. In Kenya, one mother reports saving 200 shillings a week by not having to buy kerosene. Peace Corps workers found very creative ways to explain how to use the lights. Placing them in direct sunlight for eight hours provides four to six hours of light at night. There's one single AA rechargeable battery that will last a very long time. Even the nomads in Niger travel from place to place by caravan and on camels are using this small solar reading lights. One Peace Corps worker even mentioned uh, when she worked with her students that they told her my, that she never heard the excuse, my dog ate the ho my homework. Uh, she said what they tell her is, Madam, I couldn't do my homework because I don't have any lights. So how are the lights paid for? We're a nonprofit. Roughly 60% of our donations, our, our income comes from donor contributions. However, there's been some outstanding, interesting ways and sustainable models which I can share with you. But I thought I'd lighten the subject just a little bit. The pun is intended here. Um, they're used for, uh, if you can see, the, the solar light being used under the plumbing, in the car, uh, under the hood. And uh, we've even had some very interesting uh, woman telling me that she clips her toenails with the solar lights at night. So um, we have some other very interesting partners. One not so funny, but really true for those of you that are outdoorsmen and hikers and backpackers. Uh, Patagonia is now selling our solar lights in their stores, and 100% of the profits are going to Unite to Light. So in two and a half years, we're now in 60 countries, four continents. We've distributed over 38,000 lights to date. And this is just a drop in the bucket. We um, have found, hopefully, uh, the darkest corners of the globe and are beginning to uh, set the world ablaze. Again, pun intended. Um, 
partners that I've highlighted on this page, you probably can't see them in the back of the room, but those are some of our local partners. We now have over 150 partners distributing lights. Rotary clubs uh, around the world from Canada to Bangladesh have distributed thousands of lights in different countries. As I mentioned, Direct Relief International. This uh, picture I think some of you will probably recognize. This was after Hurricane Sandy in the East Coast. And you're wondering, okay, well what, is her, what does uh, Unite to Light have to do with this picture of people trying to charge their cell phones? Well, we're not done yet. So we invented the small solar reading light, which now has become an all-purpose solar light. And we realized that in the developing countries, people have more cell phones than clean toilets. So what they need to do without electricity, how are they going to charge their cell phones? So we've invented a solar cell phone charger. The USB port on the cell phone charger actually also charges an e-reader. So people now, instead of having to send books to the developing countries, which are expensive and costly and difficult to send, um, now everything can be loaded on a Kindle. We have a project that's pending in Kenya with uh, 50 books in Swahili, 50 books in English on refurbished Kindles that will be recharged by our solar uh, charger called UTLC. So if you're interested, I'm at the back of the room. We have lights available. Uh, I promised Bruce that I wouldn't lock you in the door with, uh, if you didn't want to leave without buying one, but I might twist your arm anyway and, and lock you in. But uh, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about what we're doing.